Chapter 7, Mishnah 9. This Mishnah records four testimonies given by Rabbi Nehunya ben Gudgeda. The first two are about the laws of marriage and divorce, and the last two concern the laws of certain stolen items. All these testimonies are also found in Getin 5.5. The first testimony. Rabbi Nehunya ben Gudgeda testified concerning a deaf-mute girl whose father married her off, that she can be divorced by giving a get, divorce document. Although a deaf mute is not considered mentally competent, her acceptance of the get is valid. Since a woman can be divorced without her consent, mental competence is not required. The second testimony. Andy testified concerning an orphaned minor, the daughter of a Yisrael, i.e. an Ankohen, who, after losing her father, was married off by her mother or brothers to a Kohen. That she may eat teruma because she is the wife of a Kohen, and that if she dies, her husband inherits her property. The third testimony. And he testified concerning a stolen beam that the thief built into a large building, that the thief may return its value instead of the beam itself. Although biblical law commands the thief to return the property he stole, if it still exists, the sages decreed in this case that he does not have to knock down the building to return the beam itself, but may pay its monetary value instead. The fourth testimony. And he testified concerning a stolen chatas offering, i.e. an ordinary animal was stolen by someone who then sanctified it as a chatas offering, whose stolen status is unknown to the public, that it atones, i.e. it is treated as though it were a valid offering, which provides atonement for sin, and the thief need not bring another animal in its place. This enactment was made for the benefit of the altar. Although the offering is invalid because it was stolen, the sages were concerned that if the thief would have to bring another in its place, the Kohanim would realize that they had offered and eaten an invalid offering. This might upset them so greatly that they would refrain from bringing other offerings, out of fear that they too are stolen. The sages therefore exempted the thief from replacing the offering for the benefit of the altar, that is, to prevent the altar from being neglected by the Kohanim and thus empty of offerings.